coming up tonight on Blitz, JPS Showdown, undefeated Provine takes on highly talented Callaway for Capital City bragging rights. Plus, both the Cougars and Bulldogs looking to avoid a two-game skid. Highlights from Rankin County. And marquee matchup, 6A juggernauts Pearl and Madison Central, they battle for supremacy in our Sonic Game of the Week. Don't check your watch. You know what time it is. Coach, <laughs> just called in the Blitz. This is Blitz 16, the one to watch. Now your host, Josh Jackson. Turn up that volume, folks. Let's head out to Rankin County for Brandon and Northwest Rankin. First frame, D. Baker gets D. Carey, has D. Speed, runs D. Ball, A. D. Yards to the house. D. Baker gives Northwest Rankin D. 7-0 lead. After Brandon's next drive stall, Cameron Carroll, that's a big man, trying to get things going for the coup. Ugh, that's nasty, folks. Tough run, but that drive wouldn't produce any points. Back to Brandon. Sophomore Will Rogers shows some mobility, buys some time. It was well worth the investment. Bo Wiley puts it in a mutual fund. Dogs inside Cougars territory. And then just a little bit later, Javarius Span, he's going to liquidate the funds, finishes the deal. We're all knotted at seven with the EP. How about some defense? Brandon now with the ball. Let's see what they can do. QB looks downfield, but Jaden Webb is in Mr. Will Rogers' neighborhood. Interception would keep Brandon from scoring. It was 7-7 seven to seven at the half, but NWR goes on to pull off the upset. 28-14 is that final. And folks, you are dialed into the most comprehensive Friday night football show in the Magnolia State. Welcome into week five of Blitz 16. Brought to you by Bank Plus. I'm 16 WAPD Sports Director Josh Jackson. And I'm sports anchor Ashley Shawmody. Florence suffered its first loss of the season last week at the hands of Scott Central. Yeah, the team it faced tonight, Forrest, also fresh off of a loss. However, the Bearcats had dropped the previous two. Down Highway 49 South, we go Eagles hosting the Bearcats. Three phases to the game. Let's see some special teams. Florence's Cameron McDougal returns it just shy of the 50-yard line. That's how you do it. Where that number 25? Looking like Clarence McDougal there. The guy used to play at Clinton, played at State. How about that? All right. But Bearcats defense is no joke. Ian Vaughn is sacked by Renaldrick Morrell. Morrell making a lot of plays the last few weeks, too. More Morrell. Forrest Bearcats, Dylan Grayson hands it off to him. And Morrell will lose the deep. Oh, yes, sir. Now get out of my way. I'm taking this one to the crib. To the house he goes, breaking multiple tackles, scores a touchdown. How about that? Ian Vaughn, a little bit later, is going to complete a pass for Florence to Josh Quick. It's my guy here. He's back for a senior season. Makes a nice catch. First down there, but the Bearcats pull out the road win. Final score, Fords 31, Fords 14. Well, this year, the Panthers aren't the only team in Yazoo County making noise. The City Squad entered Friday 3-1 and one as they hosted Port Gibson. Pick this one up in the first quarter. Port Gibson facing a third and short when Demarius Hicks tacks the QB keeper 20 yards. That would be for the touchdown. They choose to go for two, and Hicks will take the QB keeper once more for the score. Port Gibson up 8-0. Later in the first, Yazoo City facing a fourth and long when QB Ron Cedric weakly drops back finds Tommy Washington. Check out that catch for the first down. Then later in the drive, weakly finds Percy Green for the 25-yard touchdown pass. They would go for two again weakly. Fakes the handoff, takes it in for the score. Yazoo City ties it up 8-8. Eight they would fall on this one against Port Gibson. Final score 30 to 22. Now to our Sonic game of the week, Jags and Pirates. Everyone, Josh, had this one circle. No doubt about it, Ashley. <laughs> Madison Center and Pearl could very well meet in the 6A championship this year. 16 WAPT's Micah Fleet reports from the jungle. Guys, it's a 6A matchup of unbeaten's Pearl looking to come in here to Madison Central and get away with a win. It's a defensive slugfest, and we all know it. The jungle isn't known for pirates, and early on, Madison Central sticking to that model. Onside kick recovered on the first play of the game thanks to Charmin Holmes Jr. Unfortunately, that's all that went right in the first half for MC. QB J.D. Hull tosses one downfield, picked off by Pearl corner Jarvis Townsend. And if the 30-plus yard return isn't bad enough, Hull got injured 
record on the play. Pirates QB Jake Smith art column the magician. Makes the ball disappear for me on this one, but Jalen Stovall says, look at me. Helicopter hit, but you never feel pain when you get six. Jags can't convert on offense and go into the half down 7-0. Quick defensive score for Pearl, but an even faster one for the Jags offense. I barely get my camera up to see senior running back Cameron White break one for the Jags. Shout out to the booth for pulling up the replay for me. Jags trail 14-7. Pearl's defense choking the life out of MC, whether recovering fumbles or forcing incomplete passes to kill drives. John Perry's Pirates sail into the jungle and shred it with cannon fire. Pearl wins 14 Seven. Two great defenses. I wouldn't be surprised if we can meet back up again. We are a uh, resilient group. We are very tough, and these jokers will fight, man. Like, if we want to go to a bar room, I I'll take half of these jokers with me, I promise you. The defense, they did what they had to do. They defense was hard, but we, we pulled it off, though. We pulled it off, as you see in the scope. We pulled it off. Guys, Pearl comes away with a W in this one. Madison Central's got a rebound going into district play next week. For now, we're out here in Madison. Micah Fleet, 16, WAPT Sports. All right, once again, that final score, Pearl wins it 14-7. My guy, Johnny Winston, if you don't know it, that's my guy. John Perry, uh, you'll see him a little later in the show. I promise you, you don't want to miss that. <laughs> Well, the capital city was up for grabs Friday night as Callaway and Provine battled it out for JPS bragging rights. The Chargers have been the squad to be in recent years, but it was the Rams that arrived with an undefeated mark. Pick this one up in the first. Provine QB Patrick Johnson to Daniel Wilson. Wilson dives for the end zone. The Rams strike first. They're up 7 nothing early, but Chargers have an answer. And he goes by Malik Heath. You've heard him before. Quarterback Tyrese Winford drops back, finds Heath for the six points. EP no good. Callaway down 7-6. to six. But back to the Rams in the red zone now. Switching it up under center. Folks, there's a reason he's our Blitz 16 Week 4 Player of the Week winner. Fred Hunter Jr. calls his own number. To the end zone he goes. Provine extends their lead 14-6. to six. And now you may see a trend here back to the Chargers now. And to this duo, Winford to Heath for yet another six points. Still no good on the extra points. Coach, get to work on that one. Callaway down 14 to 12 at that point. In the second, Dabney for the Chargers breaks up the routine with this interception. Takes it down the sideline inside the five. Chargers would score on the very next down. But a turnover on downs gives Callaway the ball once more. This one on game, a monkey see, monkey do. Interception. This time by Rams' Elvin Horton. Callaway led it 20-14 to 14 at the half, but y'all, it's Provine who gets the win in double overtime. Final score 33-27. to 27. The Rams remain undefeated. All right, now let's get to our anatomy of the play. You just saw Provine Rams with the win over Callaway in double overtime. Now, I know we've given a lot of love to those Rams today with Fred Hunter Jr. as our Player of the Week winner, but... They deserve the love tonight. So here we go, Hunter at QB for this play. He calls his own number with the help of a lot from his offensive line. You see, it seems like he makes it straight to the end zone, but we know that it's, of course, with a lot of help. So let's go ahead with our blitz play back button. Bring this up in slow-mo. You see Hunter, he gets the ball, but then we're gonna stop the play right here with three key critical blocks. I have them marked in red for you. He gives him that straight open shot. He keeps on going through. I marked one more. He's behind number nine. It's number four. And that gives Hunter the straight edge to the secondary. And he's just too much muscle for those Callaway Chargers. He gets straight to the end zone for that score. And there you have it, Josh. Ashley's anatomy of the play. Wow, folks. She is the John Madden of high school football. When it comes to rivalries, not many bigger than Tri-County versus Canton Academy on the MAIS front. To make it even better, the two met in last season's 2A championship. Let's go up Highway 49 to Flora, where there is plenty of smoke from the barbecue grills. Number 21, Shelby Johnson. Oh, you got a love picture, man. Gets an interception and makes a nice return down the sideline. That's how you do it, son. Looking like Josh Jackson in his prime. Tri-County would return the favor, though. Number 61, Cameron Tyre. Big man picks it off, and he's going to return it to the house for the TD. 7 to nothing. Tri-County Academy. All right. TCA, JoJo Jones will make a nice run before he's going to be taken down there. And Tri-County would also try a field goal. It goes to the left, though. Still 7 to nothing. Canton Academy wins it in the rematch. Final score, 31 to 27. 
Time out on the field, but when we return, St. Joe looked to take down perennial power Jackson Prep. How it turned out on the other side of the break. And again, folks, just in case you were wondering, well, well, what is the best high school football show in the Magnolia State? <laughs> Kids, tell them. Well, Josh, the MAIS has flexed its muscles so far this season. I see don't, it. Don't look too closely. Don't look too closely. <laughs> no doubt about it. With a well above 500 mark against MHSAA squads, the dominance was raising some eyebrows. St. Joe had a chance to change that Friday, taking on Jackson Prep, but Jerry on Ely had other plans. They didn't want to punt the ball to him. He still got the ball anyway from the lateral, and to the house he goes. <laughs> now, it's hard to stop that, man. That's why he's the number one back in the class of 2019, folks. How about some offense? My main man, Chance Lovertich, showing that he can do it, rolls out. He's going to find my other guy, Maddox Henry, first down pass. Yeah, get off that face mask, son. All right, that one leads to this. Reed Peets has a great name, even better athletic ability, folks. TD gives prep. Reed Collins coming up here in just a second. Coach Lott a little bit upset there. Big time quarterback, pro style quarterback, evading the pressure, gets it off, but it was just too much of Jackson prep in this one. They score the most points ever in program history. Previous high was 72 points back in 1972. The final in this one, Prep wins it 77 to 20. Well, with back to back wins, Central Hines only giving up an average of seven and a half points, a contest in its last two games. Hillcrest, the team it faced tonight, looking for its very first win of the season. Let's get right to it. Beginning of the second bow with the quarterback keeper, you see it right there, outruns a few defenders, picks up the big first down. Later on in the drive, Blake Monty Beller gets the handoff, just runs over the Hillcrest defender, scores the touchdown, putting his team up 41 0. Extra point was good. Central Hines was in complete control tonight. They win this one in dominating fashion. Final score, 48 to zero. We have much more action from across the Metro coming up, but first, some more Friday night finals from around the Magnolia State. Change that channel, you're watching Blitz 16. Ladies and gentlemen. All right, folks, that's Mr. Fred Hunter from Provine High School, our week four Blitz 16 player of the week. He had nine carries, 124 yards, and five touchdowns last Friday night. Myself, along with Johnny Donaldson for Bank Plus, gave Hunter his hardware this afternoon. Once again, big congrats to friend Hunter, our week four player of the week. Yazoo County, a force to be reckoned with, led by Memphis commit Kenny Gainwell. The undefeated Panthers got first-year coach Robert Jacobs and Raymond Friday night. Starting this one late in the second, Raymond facing a fourth and five quarterback, Alvin Brown. He gets the QB keeper. Around the outside, picks up the first down. Still, after this play, we're in the second. Yazoo County Q QB Kenny Gainwell finds Dontrell Green cutting across the middle, runs over one defender before finally being taken down, and that would help set up a touchdown. Yazoo County goes up 34-0 after that. They go on to shut out in this one. 61-0 is your final score. Wow, those Panthers are really good. Over at Newell Field, Jim Hill and Murrah combined six losses, but since they met each other, one team will get his first win tonight. The other 0-4, let's get right to it. Tigers with the ball. They try to run a little misdirection, but the handoff gets mishandled. Mustangs hop on the ball and get great field position. With the ball, now the handoff to number two, and he bounces off a defender and refuses to go down before he picks up the nice game. Mustangs would eventually score, putting them up seven to nothing, and they get the final laugh in this one. That final score, 21 to eight. Murrah wins it over Jim Hill. When we return, Calvin Bolton and Cannon Bay Jacktown to take on Wingfield. Head coach Calvin Bowden made a name for himself as an assistant over at Ridgeland High. Now leading the City of Lights Tigers, he has Canton off to one of his best starts in recent years. Tigers visited Wingfield for week five. Jacktown it is. Let's go to North Jacksonville. Wingfield's Jane Perkins makes a nice run. 
And then Jaquan Williams going to get a pick off of Wingfield. That's how you do it. Represent. For, they call it Cracktown. I, I don't know why, folks, but that's, that's what they call it. Quarterback number 23, Vic Webster, would make a nice run before setting up a touchdown to number seven, James Perkins. Again, that guy can run the ball. Nice replacement for uh, Andre Thomas there. They would go for two. Wingsfield tight end picks up the ball and scores, making the score 14 to 8. Canton still ahead, though, and they go on to win that final 22 to 8. Now to Weston and Richland. Rangers hosting the Cobras. I guess that's what a Cobra sounds like. We pick things up in the second quarter. Richland's Rangers down 20 to 7. Weston Cobras, Dale Thickpin hands it off to Jaquavian Harris. And Harris would not be denied. Another touchdown for the Cobras. Big pin, though, a little bit later, is going to be sacked by Richland Rangers' Greg Knox. He sounds like he's a great defensive player. That's the way to name him, Mom. Gets a huge pickup for a first down there. How about this? Big pin again, going to keep it. Has a big time run to the Rangers' goal line. And let's see there. He's moving the ball. He's moving the ball. Let's see what we can get here. Final score in this one, though, Wesson comes up with the victory on the road. They beat Richland 47 to 13 is that final. We'll step aside one last time, but when we return, it's this week's High Five Plays. Who takes on the top honors of the night? Find out next. Keep it locked on the Blitz, folks. All right, welcome back to Blitz 16, <laughs> presented by Bank Plus. You're probably wondering why we're wearing these jerseys. You'll find out in just a second here. It's time for the moment you've all been waiting for this week's High Five Plays, Ashley. All right, let's go out to number five. This one's going to go to Callaway's Malik Heath. You know this guy here. He uses those long arms to grab the catch over his defender to the end zone. He goes for six. Number four goes to Yazoo City's Tommy Washington makes a tough catch for the first down. Poor Gibson's DeMarcus Six made sure it was just a first down and nothing more after that. Number three, more from the Chargers we go. It's number three who goes to Dabney, makes a beautiful interception, runs it back all the way inside the five. And number two, Force Bearcats, Dylan Grayson hands it off to Renaudric Morrell. That is a big man. He picks up some big yards and he's headed to the big house, folks. Breaks multiple tackles and scores a touchdown. Of course, we're going to defeat Florence, too. All right, number one, Jerry on Ely. They didn't want to punt it to him, but uh, the lateral, he still gets the ball. And, folks, breaks one, two, three, four, five. You ain't going to catch that, man. To the crib it goes, folks. That's your top play, number one play of the night. Folks, what a night it has been. Come on in here, Coach Beard. Come on in here. Come on in here. Look, look, we know, we know. Look, folks. Here we uh, go. It's, it's Mr. John Perry from Pearl High School. Uh, Ashley and I, we, we picked Madison Central to defeat Pearl. We, we were wrong, Coach. Appreciate you. And you gave me Willie Brown. Willie Brown didn't make me look too good the last time we went one-on-one. -on -one, no, so. and, uh, well, you helped us out tonight, though. I appreciate <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, we we take all the motivation we got. So what appreciate I wanted to do, since your luck is so bad, I wanted to bring both of y'all. Oh, we have wow. these lucky coins. Oh, wow. Thank and I'm thinking you. next time oh, when y'all pick, Pearl. if you'll rub that, uh -huh. it'll be bring you we some better luck. I promise. <laughs> So look, you we brought me a helmet this. too. Yes, sir. So, uh, and, and Willie, whenever wrong. he wants to go one on one, I'm, I'm ready for you, man. Just know, <laughs> I'm bringing the pants. I'm, I'm repping Tyler Knight. Tyler Knight, Tyler Knight they can get it too. <laughs> it's uh, here we go, here we go, folks. Yes. We can do it wrong. Here we go. Now, well, I figured after that peak you had, it, <laughs> I figured you needed a big helmet. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But coach, let's talk about the game a little bit. Of uh, five turnovers for Madison Central. Definitely great, great defense. Tyler Knight, uh, one of the leaders there. Willie Brown, who plays both ways for you. What do you think was propels you guys to that win at 14 to 7? You game? know, just just being tough, you know, and, and defensively creating turnovers. You know, I mean, they, they, they'll say, I mean, they put them on the ground and they did, but you know, we ran to the ball and we caused a lot of them and. It was a shame that either team had to lose, honestly. That's two really good football teams. And, you know, tonight we just come out a little little ahead of them, you know. Uh, we're just thankful. I guess that lucky coin come in handy. Maybe it'll help you guys next time. You're right. And <laughs> Ashley's going to ask you a question here for a second. But I'll tell you, the reason I picked Pearl to, to be, to take a loss to Madison Central was this reason here. I feel like if there was one team that could beat you guys, it was Madison Central. Any other team, I, even West Point, and everybody, some people are saying they're the number one team in the state. I felt like... Pearl would fall tonight, but uh, you proved me wrong, Ashley. I'm not going to lie, Coach. I mean, I underestimated you guys. I did. I thought maybe Madison Central at home, that Jaguar defense. I haven't seen them play, though, and I, I shouldn't have. And you know what? This hey, is going to help I'm going to tell you me. what. They're really good. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't hardly 
blame you. We just we just happened to get lucky tonight. So you always need to keep that coin with you. Congrats sure. to your win. Huge oh, win just, tonight. Just so you know, too, Ashley and myself, we're in the top five, if not top three, when it comes to the pickups. It's just the ones that we lose on. We try this to break week, them not all. so good. So just no, trust us, <laughs> trust us, folks. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. Thank y'all. Go Pirates! I'm putting this on.